the engine, the sound of the whistle, and the click of the tracks. That's why I like to travel by train. There are no long discussions about going right or left, or even what speed to travel. Every Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. in the tropical tourism mecca of Cannes, a train pulls out from the station bound not for glory but for Forsyth, a sleepy railhead in the lower Gulf country of Queensland, Australia. In Cairns, most tourists are heading for the Great Barrier Reef. A few train lovers, however, turn west instead of south and head toward the back of beyond. That looks good. You can see the long line of freight cars that we're going to be unloading through today and into tomorrow before we get to Forsyth. Sleeping on this leather seat is not easy. The charm of this century-old compartment is almost forgotten. In fact, the wisdom of this adventure crosses my mind as I lay awake and hang on. Through the night we travel, passing Karunda and Mariba. Then, heading south, we arrive at Amadan at 5.30 a.m. At the Cowtown store, a bacon and egg breakfast is ready when we arrive. After breakfast, we jump at the chance to ride with the engineer. This thing here is what we call a star. That's the authority for me to be on the section. That's my throttle, that's my reverser. Speedo, it's an STD phone. Ah, it's, not like, it's not like driving a car. You can hop in your car and just drive your car. This here, you got to know your road. Before you can drive a train, you've got to know your road. Where you pick it up, where you buy your brakes, where you throw your throttle off or anything like that. Not every train's the same train because you'll get uh, another train with more tonnage behind you and it'll push you over uh, over certain hills and everything. You know, like this bloke here, I've got to pick him up and take him over. Knowing we are in good hands, we worry less about swollen rivers, trestles embedded in sandy river bottoms, and the hillside hugging tracks. The train's first mission is freight. That accounts somewhat for the 10 miles per hour progress. Along the way, rail cars are shunted to new locations. Cattle are loaded, beer and supplies unloaded. We get a peek at life in the outback when a cattle station owner comes with his two small girls to pick up irrigation supplies. Will she tell her grandchildren about the bygone days when a train came this way? I hope so. These tracks were laid 90 years ago to support the pioneer miners of Mount Surprise, Ina Slay, and Forsyth. Not much is going on these days. At the railroad hotel, the owner wraps the beers in newspapers to keep them cold. The switchboard in this old post office museum was just retired in 1987. At Inesley, population 30, there is time to wander down to the town's famous gorge for a swim in the Copperfield River. The river is home to a small freshwater crocodile, but they are harmless unless provoked. The question is, what provokes a crocodile? From Inesley to Forsyth, the train weaves its way through the Newcastle Range, providing more spectacular scenery. We travel from tropical areas that will have 36 inches of rain in 24 hours 
to the desert with its first rainfall in six months. The short, stunted savanna grass is due to the poor red soil laying on a granite foundation. Further on, a longer, lush grass is growing in rich dirt atop old lava sites. Arriving at Forsyth, population 58, children greet the train. This is truly the end of the line. Here we see the most eagerly anticipated sign for all who come to town. Who wouldn't be happy to see the Goldfields Tavern after 22 hours on the train? The barefoot customers at the bar let us know these are real, no-nonsense outbackers. And a sign along the road comes to mind. The Bible says to forgive your trespassers. We don't. We shoot the bastards. I decide not to ask if these shoes belong to them. After a sleepless night on the swaying train, the six-pack motel looks pretty good. It doesn't pretend to be anything more than a clean bed and a chair to sit on. If the tavern closes, it will probably be nice and quiet. This staff, giving the engineer the authority to be on this track, is probably on display now at the old post office museum. This train no longer runs. Gone forever. I wonder, what about that nice engineer? And who delivers the beer to the good old boys? And supplies to the station owner with the two small girls? On my list, I cross out the last great train ride, Forsyth to Cannes. Been that? Done there.